Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the very first chapter of the Harry Potter series, The Philosopher's Stone. Since the Philosopher's Stone book was first released in 1997, it has achieved massive commercial success worldwide. In fact, the book received so much praise that it spawned six more books from Rowling, each expanding on the magical world that we grew to love so much. As you can imagine, the success of the franchise didn't go unnoticed by filmmakers, and so it wasn't long before the very first Harry Potter film adaptation was released in 2001. However, like with any film adaptation, certain things were left out from the books. It can be hard to condense a book into the duration of a reasonable film length, and certain aspects just don't work on the big screen, so this is always expected. The Philosopher's Stone is the shortest of the Harry Potter books, at 223 pages, so it has the least meat, so to speak, but it's also the introduction to the series, so filmmakers needed to ensure that the film had a large impact. In my opinion, those who worked on the first film arguably had the hardest job, as if the film flopped then people would have lost faith in the franchise. On the plus side, at just 223 pages, the Philosopher's Stone had, in some ways, the least ground to cover which means that it left out fewer elements of the book than any other film. They were able to comfortably include nearly everything without having the film drag on for hours. With that said, however, they still missed quite a few things. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that certain aspects of the book were just overtly omitted from the film franchise as a whole. Things like Peeves the Poltergeist, a large number of the Quidditch matches, and the clarification of the existence of Squibs. But in today's video, we're going to be discussing the Philosopher's Stone specifically. What did they miss? First of all, they miss an entire game of Quidditch against Hufflepuff. I know, I know, we can't just be watching Quidditch match after Quidditch match, but this match was fairly significant because Snape refereed it. Acting as the referee for the match only increased Harry's suspicion toward him, which resulted in Harry wanting to end the match quickly. This added pressure results in Harry catching the snitch and ending the match early. In fact, Harry ended the match in record time. Next, the film simplified Harry and Hermione being caught out of bed. After being caught, Argus Filch escorts Harry, Hermione, to McGonagall's office for punishment, where she decides that they will need to serve detention. That same night, both Draco Malfoy and Neville Longbottom were also caught out of bed, which meant that they would need to serve detention as well. However, in the film, Neville never serves his detention in the Forbidden Forest, and is instead replaced with Ron. This is because the circumstances in which they were caught changed. Next, Centaurs, Bane, and Megorian were completely omitted from the film, though they do sort of appear in Order of the Phoenix, and instead the only centaur with any emphasis placed on him was Ferenzi. In the film, Bane chastises Ferenzi for helping Harry. For the best, what is that to do with us? Centaurs are concerned with what has been foretold, it is not our business to run around like donkeys after stray humans in our forest. In the book, the centaurs are introduced as a proud race of stargazers that do not meddle with human affairs. Next, the film glosses over Draco challenging Harry to a duel, which occurs in Chapter 9, The Midnight Duel. In this chapter, Draco challenges Harry to a duel, and they agree to meet at midnight in the trophy room. When they arrive in the trophy room, they find that they were set up with Draco. In an attempt to get away from Filch and Mrs. Norris, they run away and unintentionally stumble upon the room containing Fluffy on the third floor corridor. Bearing Fluffy in mind, let's segue into the next missing plot point. In the film, when the trio encounter Fluffy, he's already asleep with the magical harp playing next to him. This is slightly different in the book. They were looking straight into the eyes of a monstrous dog, a dog that filled the whole space between ceiling and floor. It had three heads, three pairs of rolling, mad eyes, three noses, twitching and quivering in their direction, three drooling mouths, saliva hanging, and slippery ropes from yellowish fangs. You see, in the book, Harry brings a flute along with him, intending on using it to lull Fluffy to sleep. When they arrive, Fluffy is asleep from a magical harp, which is consistent between the book and film. However, the primary difference here is that the enchantment on the harp wears off, forcing Harry to play the flute, subsequently putting Fluffy back to sleep. This brings us to my next point, the challenges, puzzles on the way to the Philosopher's Stone. In the films, though the trio still face many challenges, a few were actually omitted. One was an additional troll that was put in place to protect the stone, and another was the potion puzzle. They stepped over the threshold, and immediately a fire sprang up behind them in the doorway. 
It wasn't ordinary fire either, it was purple. At the same instant, black flame shot up in the doorway leading onwards. They were trapped. Brilliant. This isn't magic, it's logic. A puzzle. A lot of the greatest wizards haven't got an ounce of logic. They'd be stuck in here forever. Now, I don't really care that they got rid of the troll, but I would have really liked to have seen this potion puzzle in the films. It was an obstacle that required an immense amount of intelligence and logic, a challenge perfect for the likes of Hermione Granger. Danger lies before you while safety lies behind. Two of us will help you, whichever you would find. One among us seven will let you move ahead. Another will transport the drinker back instead. Two among our number hold only nettle wine. Three of us are killers, waiting hidden in line. Choose, unless you wish to stay here forevermore, to help you in your choice, we give you these clues for. First, however slyly the poison tries to hide, you will always find some on Nettle Wine's left side. Second, different are those who stand at either end, but if you would move onwards, neither is your friend. Third, as you see clearly, all are different size, neither dwarf nor giant holds death in their insides. Fourth, the second left, and the second on the right, are twins once you taste them, though different at first sight. And finally, the last plot point that I'm going to discuss pertains to the actual events that transpired in the Mirror Chamber, when Harry finally reaches Quirrell and obtains the Philosopher's Stone. He saw his reflection, pale and scared looking at first, but a moment later, the reflection smiled at him. It put its hand into its pocket and pulled out a blood red stone. It winked and put the stone back in its pocket, and as it did so, Harry felt something heavy drop into his real pocket. Somehow, incredibly, he'd gotten the stone. In the films, Harry Potter kills Quirrell by grabbing his face and turning him into dust. In the film, Harry blacks out after defeating Quirrell, waking up in St. Mungo's with Dumbledore by his bedside. In the books, Harry blacks out while still in a death grip with Quirrell, just as Dumbledore appears on the scene. When Harry wakes, a few things are revealed, the first being that Quirrell died, the second being pivotal information regarding why Voldemort would want to kill Harry in the first place. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Moving forward, I'm going to be doing one of these videos for each film. I may not have hit every missing aspect from the films, but I think I covered the major ones here. If there are any bits that I missed, then comment them down below. Until next time, the truth it is a beautiful and terrible thing, and should therefore be treated with caution.